11 a.m. All right. Welcome, everyone. I call the November 2nd meeting of the Home Advisory Group to order at 11 a.m. Roll call, please, Ms. Fletcher. Consuela Aguilas. Ron Bastian. Here. Ruth Broder. Amy Chavez. Here. Mary Chancy. Michael Crandall. Garcia. Here. William Hennis. Here. Lynn LaPlante. Here. Donald Kachowski. <coughs> Julie Renahan. Here. Scott Heiser. Here. James A. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have one public comment. Um, Beth has joined us. No? Um, Shaking your head. Hi, I'm Beth Davis with the Alden Foundation. I'm just, you have two items on your agenda having to do with the foundation. So I'm really just here to answer questions. I think staff are presenting, making the presentation. So then I'm just available to fill in. Oh, okay. Wonderful. So, thank you. Thank Welcome. And thank you for joining you. us. Um, so no public comments. So then I move to approve the minutes from our home advisory group regular meeting that was held on Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. Second. Thank you very much. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. So um, I will entertain a motion for, we're skipping item A has been pulled. So we're going right to item B. Can I make one note on, on item A? Please, Dave, yes. It's, it's just a beautiful facility. So I would, we had a ribbon cutting last week. I just want to make a note of it. Uh, because of a, the, ma the manager's unit is no longer in question. So we're really just processing a time extension, which Mary can do on her own. But I just wanted to make a note. We, we walked through the building last Thursday. Uh, they got about $2.5 million in, in home funds from us. But it's a beautiful facility with um, just a lot of amenities and just a very nice place. Pass up to the forest preserve. So I just wanted to make a note. If anyone, Thank you so much, Dave. Um, so I will go to action item B then on your agenda, and I will entertain a moment, a motion for recommendation for approval of a preliminary set aside of Home Investment Partnerships Act funds between DuPage County and Alden Foundation, the Addison Horizon Senior Living Community, in the amount of three million five hundred and seventy thousand dollars. So moved. Thank you. Um, how about some discussion on this? You want to give an overview? Sure. So this would be the next Alden project in a way, right? So there already is a connection, which is uh, fine with us. Uh, the, the big point I would make here is, that, so they've applied to us. We've reviewed their application. At this point, they're requesting 3.57 million. Those numbers can change. And as final financing gets worked out or depending on what's approved and what's not approved relative to their project, this board will have the opportunity to review it three times before it goes to fruition before it actually goes forward. So this is just the first side. This is a set aside. This is just saying at this point, they can apply then to IDA for low income housing tax credits. This is saying that they can include a letter saying what well, the county has committed this much in funding. Um, but all of those numbers can change uh, throughout the course. So the, the project in question is in Addison. Um, the, as I referenced earlier, the, the partner we're working with is, uh, has done projects with us before and has been um, very easy to work with and very positive to work with. Um, we are always looking for home projects. It's kind of an always uh, out there trying to find projects for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, another project focused on the senior population. Um, that's all its mission. That's really who they serve. Um, but at this point, staff has reviewed their application. We believe uh, that it's worth moving forward. And so we've asked for your recommendation of just the, the set aside. The one, the note I was uh, going to add was one one variable that I think has impacted this number is is increased construction costs. We've also heard reference to that, but I think as they were putting together the application and looking at what this might cost, that was the biggest thing that had changed from probably the last time they applied, which was say four years ago. Uh, these projects take several years before from the from the moment that this gets approved to the moment that we have a ribbon cutting. It's probably four years. So God bless you. <laughs> We apparently have some member video. That's all right. <laughs> we see you. So, so staff's recommendation is to move forward with the, or to approve the the preliminary set aside. Okay. Well, thank you. Does anyone have any questions about that? Um, okay. If not, yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Member. I don't really have a question. I just have a comment. I'm very excited when we see this, like these senior housing and things like that. And, and, I, and, I, and you're right, the one in Warrenville is a fantastic project, so I'm excited to see another one coming to Addison. And I'm, I'm 
I'm also hoping that, and, and as you said, you're always looking for more because I'd love to see affordable homes that you know go from all the ranges of ages. So I think that's something that really we all need to be working on. And I think I think you guys have been starting to work on it. So I'm excited to see what comes forward with that. So I just wanted to say that. So I can, yeah, I'm very much excited for this one. So yeah, I would I would I would say us too. I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> affordable multifamily is, is really like a, a spot that we'd love to, you know, so we have to find a developer. It's not something we can just do on our own, but right. um, that's a space we'd love to do more in. For sure. Yeah, I know. I just went to the grand opening for the one in 12 to Larkin and Elgin, you know, and, and I'd love to have something like that brought down into DuPage County. Right? We are working on it. Yeah. We are all on it. Yep. Right. If I could just add too, representing sure. Addison, we're very happy uh, for this project as well. We don't have affordable senior housing in town, so this is something that's been the village's board's vision or the village's goal and vision for some time. So uh, we've been working with the Alden Foundation. We visited some of their sites, uh, and they've been fantastic to work with. So we're we're really excited about this project as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, all all excitement all around, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. Beth, are you applying for IDA tax credits this coming round? So we submitted our preliminary application just a week or two ago. Um, that focuses on the site. IDA makes a decision if they like the location, and I think they'll love this location. The final application is submitted on February 11th. So um, okay. we would hear a couple months after that, probably in May, whether or not we get the tax credits. Great. We actually have a planning and zoning commission meeting scheduled later this month, actually on the 10th. So the, uh, the planning commission will, will hear this case uh, for the first time. So we should hopefully have our, if all goes well, we should hopefully have our um, plan development approval before we go in for tax credits in February. Sure. That's, the, that's the plan. Great. So wonderful. We're excited to be working with the page again. I feel like we've had this great relationship. We've done so much work mm -hmm. with you all over the last 20 years. Um, so thank you so much for supporting us. No problem. And I, I think that we win um, in terms of committees for the most excitement in today. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to take that. Yes, yeah, second. <laughs> all in favor. Um, but truly, actually, all in favor of this motion. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. That motion passes. I will entertain a motion for action item C, recommendation for approval of, of the 11th revision to the underwriting standards for rehabilitation programs policy to accept referrals only for code violations received from municipalities in DuPage County and referrals from the DuPage County Community Services Weatherization Unit and DuPage County Community Services Senior Services Unit. Second. Thank you very much. Discussion. I guess I was thinking about this and I, I don't want to oversell this program. This is a very small program and a very small portion of what we do. Um, in its best form, we're probably talking 15 to 20 individual homeowners a year. Over the last couple of years, it's been less than that. The program's been in a little bit of, of tough straits since 2019. We had a, a staff vacancy and then we didn't fill that right away. And then we had COVID and it's been a little bit back and forth. Um, in, in my head, what I'm proposing, it's it, this is a, a good project good program for kind of problem houses that come through other means. So sometimes that comes from municipalities. We had a, uh, a woman in Villa Park that we helped with a problem that the, the village was involved and we were just able to use this funding to kind of help solve whatever problem that was. It was a tree in this case, situation that needed to come down. Um, we also have issues like with our weatherization program, we have someone who's eligible for services, but they need a new roof and they can't, we can't put it in because if we put an in insulation, it would immediately get wet and then their house would be in worse shape than we when we started. So if we had some kind of program like this that could go in and put on the new roof, then they'd be eligible for weatherization services. So I guess my point is I feel it works better as a companion program to some someone else rather than just what it's been as a free on the website standalone application. Anyone can put it in an application. Um, the other thing that I would reference in here, so when, when I kind of came in, there was a big stack of applications that had been taken and, and I've sort of worked through those over the last year and a half to kind of figure out what, figure out if anyone moved, figure out we've done a couple projects to get some things done. I, I would grandfather all of them in basically. I would, I'm not gonna just say, oh, sorry, we changed the policy, you're out. So I would still work with all of those files, but, but going forward, I would be looking just for referrals from the municipalities or referrals from weatherization, or sometimes we have senior services, someone needs a ramp or an ADA bathroom or those, those kind of projects. 
I just think given the scope of what we're talking about, it fits better as a referral companion program than as a standalone. Uh, I mean, the way that it works is standalone. If someone hears about it, they put in an application for it. And their neighbor hears about it, they put in an application for it. And it's not really doing the kind of targeting that, uh, that I would like to see. So that's my proposal for the, the program going forward. I don't know, Mary's got a longer history with it than I do, but. Yeah, this is really a policy decision that is kind of driven by our, our, our capacity. And so by narrowing the eligibility, we're, we're trying to fit uh, the program more into the, into the capacity that we have. There's nothing to say that, you know, five years from now and boy, we could hire, you know, a thousand people or, you know, it becomes easy to hire people. It becomes easy to, to staff. We could certainly open it up again. But I think what we're trying to do is make sure that we're sort of filtering the applications sort of even before they come in so that it's really, it's, it's folks who are, who, who have the greatest need are the ones that are coming in without, um, uh, so that we're not disappointing people by having them wait forever because there's too many applications and we just can't get to them. Yes, member Chavez. Um, I just was wondering, so once you, so you'll pull the application from the website, correct, first, and then how often do the partner um, applications come through? Like, are you get, how many of those just give me like a ballpark maybe of how many of those you're getting? Are we gonna be able to meet meet the budget with the current need out there when we partner? So we have closed applications for the last, because we were so backed up okay, and so overloaded. Okay. So I guess so I don't have an off. estimate of okay. that. I shut that down maybe a year ago or so. I'm just saying we have enough to try to work through. Um, I, I don't know exactly how much to expect. Like weatherization could probably give us a, a fair amount, but seniors and the municipalities are a little more one-off um, depending on the specific needs of the case. Okay. But I also put in here a little bit more of, um, like allowing a little more prioritization too, if we have someone that's like an emergency case. Like I want, I wanted something in the policy to be able to say, okay, that that can sort of move to the front of the list because I think right. we're gonna. So ideally, we're always going to be taking applications. We're always going to have referrals coming in, but there'd be some method of saying, oh, this person is, you know, they need a, a new furnace and it's winter, and they this is a priority, and so we're they're going to kind of go above someone who maybe just needs new windows or something. Got it. So, I like that. Okay, that sounds like we're going to be meeting the most urgent needs. Mm -hmm. so. That's okay. the idea. Great. Yes, Member Garcia. Yeah, I just was wondering, uh, Dave, what, what's the education program with uh, your department and like municipalities? Because I mean, I know in the municipality I came from, I mean, we, I don't think we knew that this was available. And we had all these property complaints coming in, like people who needed like stoops, you know, when they were older and they were trying to stay in their homes, that were crumbling and things like that. I mean, that I think this <clears throat> helped with. And I'm just wondering if they know that this is something that is available to them. Well, and we could, um... With this policy change, we could certainly do more outreach. I mean, some of the municipal partners may be able to jump in as well. They've We've done, it's been a lot of one-offs. So like okay. a, a water hookup or uh, an overhead sewer we did, I think. Um, it's been, uh, there was a property in uh, west of here that had a, like a sewer backup and it was just a really, property was not in good shape and we kind of used a couple different funds and worked together to kind of get at least it livable for the person who was mm -hmm. there. And and when we've had a full time staff person, Dave's been you know just trying to fill this yeah. fill this in and work through these applications the last year and a half. When we've had a, a full time person dedicated to it, part of it, part of their responsibility was to stop in, talk to the code enforcement folks from from the municipalities to make oh. sure that the municipalities um, know that we're out there. So like Paul Haas down in in development, he's very familiar with it. Okay. Um, Weatherization is within Dave's unit, so uh, senior services very clearly knows. Um, and so I think it's uh, uh, it, it, there's probably a good portion of the municipalities that are aware, but there's certainly municipalities that are not. Thank you. Um, first, I want to thank the county staff for uh, spending all time talking earlier this month on this very issue. Um, it is, you know, getting that word out to the public yeah. really is critical. Um, this came up in a meeting a few weeks ago with a realtor and a, on a particular block and some of those questions, which kind of led to a larger discussion about, do we anticipate, knowing the program was on, on hold, do we anticipate it being resurrected? So from, at least from Lombard standpoint, um, uh, we were somewhat aware of it. The next question is getting it out of the staff's heads now into the public's uh, mm -hmm. mindset. If you don't mind, I have a couple of questions associated with uh, sure. this. Um, some of the challenges that we've talked 
whether it's getting availability contractors, individuals who may not have funds and may not even know where to go or where to turn to. And one of the things I would I would like to at least offer from our standpoint, if there's a role or process, really to help people get to the point of submitting an application, what is eligible and partnering up on that. And that's something that I'd love to work with the um, county staff to because half of it is how do I even go about doing this? Um, so I would love uh, for any assistance in that regard, I think, you know, working with our, our building team, um, property maintenance staff, things of that nature. Few, a couple of generic questions associated with um, you talk about the matching nature of what uh, a companion approach to this. If there was an opportunity for a another government entity also to be able to contribute funds to this, the Village of Lombard, we do have some grant programs, but can that be qualified as part of uh, or, or given consideration associated with the met weatherization? Um, or, or met some of the programs that single family rehab met the criteria, and some of the funds were also coming through alternate sources, like a given municipality where it is. Is that something that can be favorably looked at in such applications? Yeah, we did a half and half on the overhead sewer. We did uh, the village paid a portion and we paid a portion, and that kind of split up the, the cost. We have to stay under. We, we generally stand at $15,000, that's the general, but we have to stand at $25,000 because if we go over that, we have to mitigate all the lead in the building and we don't we don't have the capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, we've done situations like that in the past where kind of the, it's usually works on, a, again, a one-off basis, but we kind of work it out and say, well, the village could give this much, we could give this much. Okay, so that, that can be yeah. a favorable attribute and that may even get to some of the time. Um, and... Um, and I think even the municipal staff assistance, you talk about some of the capacity of your staff. If there's something that if we identify a need, if there's specific areas that might help from a municipal standpoint, so you guys can do maybe less work and we can actually supplement the applicants activity. We welcome it. Um, small housekeeping item, I feel sure this one is maybe more administrative, but we talked about um, foundations and the limited nature, you know, um, that you're not going to be rebuilding foundations. Um, one of the things or the questions that sometimes it may be a matter of just regrading a residential property to get water away from the foundation. Something like it didn't say whether that was included or excluded as an eligible expense. I just wanted a quick take on it because sometimes a property regrading may very well fix that problem. I think that would be included, wouldn't it? Probably. I have to review it for sure, but I think so. Yeah. So we get a lot of roofs and a lot of foundations. Foundations can be a real slippery slope in terms of cost. It's usually more than we can do. Um, but that's, I get your point. That's sort of an in-between step that may help in many situations. Uh, I'd have to look for sure, but I think that is, but I'd have to look for sure. All right, supportive of the idea um, and whatever we can offer to the full partner. I love the idea of um, receiving some sort of assistance from the municipal staff. The, the, I think the, the obvious one to me is, you know, assistance with bidding out the work and then overseeing it so that um, uh, because that's, you know, that's kind of the chunk of it. We can determine, you know, I think our role would, you know, would absolutely have to continue to be making sure that the homeowner is eligible, that the property, it's not, so the homeowner has to be eligible and the property has to be eligible. You know, there's a whole process that we have to go through because these are HUD funds um, that would always have to remain within our within our purview but if there's if we can think about other ways to um, oversee the work um, get the contract you know get the, the scope of work developed get the get the work um, bid out i think that would be uh, that's absolutely worth sitting down and um, having some more conversation about i think would you agree yeah i mean so the, the point mary made earlier i guess it really i mean this you could size up this program right like, mm -hmm. the, the, the limit at this point is staff capacity if there's not a hud limit that says we can only spend this much on it that's that's a, a choice we could make but um i guess the only other point i would make just for current status is the other thing that's been really hard lately is getting contractors they have mm -hmm. sort of all the work they can handle oh, yeah. and then work uh, you know we don't pay as quickly as a private homeowner sometimes so i mean we got, have gotten some feedback from that perspective too we try to move it through pretty fast but it's different than just doing work at someone's house and, and 
and then just cutting you a check when, as soon as you're done. So um, we've gotten some, we've had, I have some jobs sitting that I just can't get a contract. But um, <coughs> municipalities, you probably have um, five properties in the back of your mind that you're thinking of that are, you know, I like, I, I know because from talking to municipal partners that they get frequent complaints from neighbors about this property or that property and they cite and the homeowner says they don't have any money and that's sort of a, a cycle that they can get into so I'm, I'm very interested in yeah coming up with sort of a a way to to work that and then you know just to circle back with um in terms of educating municipalities and finding out what the needs are as you know dave and i went around and did sort of a little tour of municipalities to say this is available what are your needs and i think we can just keep doing that right I think yeah. that would be extremely helpful to um, help the communication between the municipalities and the county, and then meet those needs, see where the gaps are, and also make sure that everyone is aware of what opportunities there are out there in order for applying for services and grants. Yep, yeah, we've been doing that, so we'll keep doing it. We're gonna go make tour shirts, I think, <laughs> um, <clears throat> which would just add a little element of fun. Okay, any other questions on this item? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that, that motion passes. Um, any other business? Seeing none, I with no objection, then we are adjourned. Our next meeting is December 7th, 2021. Thank you. And now, brand new, we move over to the Community Development Committee Executive Committee. So I call this meeting to order. Can we please have a roll call, Ms. Fletcher? Thank you, Ms. Whalen. Thanks, Beth. Thank you. Oh, did she give you the hey, Beth? Yeah. 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 Okay. Here. Okay. Don Bastion. Here. Amy Chavez. Here. Lori Chassie. Here. Michael Crandall. Here. Paula Garcia. Here. William Hennick. Here. Lynn LaPlante. Here. Donald Pachowski. Julie Renahan. Here. Scott Viker. Here. James A. Do we have any public comments? None. Oh, yeah, I took a note folder. I move to approve the minutes from our previous executive committee net meeting on Tuesday, October 5th. Mm -hmm. Thank second. you. Do I have a second? Thank you second. very much. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries and the minutes are approved. Um, I will entertain a motion for action item, the recommendation for approval of a first modification to an emergency solutions grant COVID response agreement with DuPage PADS, Emergency Solutions Grant Program CARES Act 2, project number ESCV 19G, increasing the funding by an additional $775,000 for a total grant award of $1,525,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got, we got that. Did you get that? I got that. Okay, wonderful. Discussion, please. <clears throat> this is uh, this is further extension of the funding for pads as they continue to um, provide hotel uh, hotel rooms for the individuals that they're serving. This is hopefully a bridge to um, getting to the point where on the next item where they um, are seeking to purchase the property. Yes. The, the point I make every time this agenda item comes up is a uh, whole lot of money on hotels, right? Like we're, we're aware of that. This puts us over 3 million in terms of total assistance we've provided for hotel stays in the county. Um, this particular pot of money has really limited uses. It's really designed for emergency shelter for individuals experiencing homelessness. So that's 100% what the funding is for and that's what we've used it for. Um, but we're certainly cognizant of the number and the total amount that we're, we're talking about here. Um, again, to Mary's point, we're, we're proposing a, a, a solution to that where we wouldn't have to necessarily pay the hotel stays anymore. And hopefully this would bridge us to that. But it is something I always try to acknowledge because I know it's a, it's a big chunk of change. Um, I think I've made this point before too, but our, our normal allocation for this money is about 300,000 and we got 3.5 million through the CARES Act. So this was, you know, a huge increase on what we would normally have. And it's all it's based on, it has to be COVID response. And this was an effective model for COVID response for this population. So that's why we've, we've put so much money behind it. Yes, very, very grateful for those CARES funds because if ever there was an emergency this past 20 months, this was it. This is what these funds are for, and um, yes, it's a really large amount, but wow, is it needed, and this is a perfect fit. And as Dave said, this is a bridge to something 
more permanent, hopefully. Um, any questions on this? No? Oh, oh yes, question. sure. Um, what's the demand? Is, what's the current demand for these hotel stays? Has there increased? So, so for Red sure. <clears throat> Hi there. Uh, I'm Eva Redzik. I'm president and CEO of the Page Pads. Thank you so much for everything you've done to help keep the folks in our care safe right now. We're really grateful for you. Um, right now, what we're seeing in terms of our, uh, so in a normal year, we'd have about 150 people during the winter coming to us needing help. Um, we have been averaging around 200, and that has gone up to maybe 220, 230 over as, as the eviction moratorium has gone away. The other thing we're seeing is uh, domestic violence shelters, as I'm sure you're aware, are full right now. So the women coming in with needs, uh, about half of them have a violence uh, are, are coming from a violent situation. Um, 23 are infants, 57 total kids, and um, the need is continuing. The other thing we've been able to do, and again, thanks to all of your support, is um, as we get capacity, because we do have 115 hotel rooms, we have a partnership with Hassett House where folks can go there if they are individuals. Families are going in, regardless of whether we're at capacity, our board is committed to make sure no kids sleep in cars, and we've all been very supportive of that. So a family goes directly in, an individual will go to stay at Hassett House until we can partner them with a roommate, and then they're coming into the hotels, but it's about 115 rooms total. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, April. Sure. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Wonderful, that motion passes. Um, our next action item, I will entertain a motion for the recommendation for approval of Community Development Block Grant CARES Act, agreement with DuPage PADS, Interim Housing Center COVID-19, project number CDC V21-03, and the amount of $3 million for purchase of an interim housing center. Oh, Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. This is a very, very, again, exciting um, initiative. Discussion. Uh, so my first point is just a procedural one. So um, this body only has authority over the $3 million in CDBG CV funds. We put it all into the agenda item because it's going to go the whole way through. But the authority for the American Rescue Plan funds that are being requested is outside of this body. So all we're voting on today is the $3 million. Um, the other procedural thing that I would note is that we initially uh, had this money set aside as part of a substantial amendment back in April. Um, but did not have a specific site or specific project at that at that point. So obviously there's been a lot of work um, between then and now. I should probably have started by thanking a lot of the our staff and a lot of the people at PADS who have done an incredible amount of work um, and met with an incredible amount of people to kind of discuss what this would look like. And 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 so I should probably started with that. But um, this would be then uh, giving the, the go ahead to enter an agreement with them. So um, I feel like we've had well, I, I, I want to have some discussion that's not just me on this, but the other point I would make is that this was a model that we feel like was established as effective through COVID, um, uh, provided uh, better access to case management, better access to services, uh, more dignity for families. Um, we really feel like that was a successful model in terms of response. This would be an opportunity to continue that as a permanent piece of DuPage County's structure. Um, there is always going to be multiple levels to homeless services. There's always going to be accessing or helping families transition to or helping individuals transition to permanent housing or helping individuals transition transition to other forms of housing um, but we feel like this would be a stabilizing piece for the the, the county infrastructure as a whole so um, certainly has staff's full support i'm certainly thankful for all the work that went into uh, us getting here um, and we would certainly open any open any questions that anyone may have on I, I would just like to add that so this is the first of four votes that will come uh, on this project. The first will be it's this committee, the Health and Human Services Committee will, will then vote on this CDBG CV funding, then the Finance Committee and the full board. So um, as someone who's been here for almost 22 years, the opportunity to actually see a permanent, uh, a permanent facility for uh, individuals experiencing homelessness is really kind of a, uh, if you had told me 10 years ago this was going to happen, I, I, you know, I would have been very excited to hear it. So I'm really excited to see this project go through. Um, uh, there's, you know, there will certainly be, you know, more discussion with the full board, but it's really exciting to, to take this first step. I couldn't agree more. Um, we had a wonderful meeting last week. Um, Mary and I were there and member Krajewski and um, April 
it was just it was such a beautiful presentation and working with the superintendents about um, attending to the needs of the children who are part of uh, experiencing homelessness right now. Um, it was eye opening. It was moving. It was um, unbelievably sad with also an equally amount of unbelievable optimism for what we can do for um, people who are having this need right now. So I also couldn't be more thrilled. This is the most important work that I feel like we're doing, some of the most important work we're doing on the board, and definitely one of my favorite reasons for being here. So um, thank you very, very much. And I'm proud uh, to be partnering up with Mary and um, all of this work that she's been doing for all of these years has led us here. So this isn't something that has happened overnight or the past, even just during the pandemic. This is just an amazing accomplishment for our county. And I think that everyone involved should feel wonderful about it. Um, any questions on this? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Wonderful, yay, this motion passes. Um, any other business that we have? I have to technically vote on the... Did I skip it's one? Exact yeah, too it's excited. Both, yeah. I'm it's sorry. On, it's it's here. on both agendas because we that's right. funded both with home and CDG. That's right. That's right. Okay. I move to approve. I will entertain a motion for a recommendation for approval of the 11th revision to the underwriting standards for rehabilitation programs policy to accept referrals only for code violations received from municipalities in DuPage County and referrals from the DuPage community, DuPage County Community Services Weatherization Unit and DuPage County Community Services Senior Services Unit. So moved. Second. Thank you. And a second. Wonderful. Any discussion or questions? We covered this in the earlier, so are we good? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Any other business? Seeing none, and with no objection, we are adjourned. Our next meeting date is December 7th, 2021. I look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you so much, everyone.